Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver and I am a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I'm also certified in culinary medicine from Tulane University. And I am a menopause specialist and the creator and founder of the Galaxy Diet, which is a lifestyle and nutrition plan for women in all phases of midlife and menopause um, in order to live your healthiest life. So I'm here today live with you guys um, to do a Q&A with you. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you're just joining, welcome. Take a second, do me a favor and double tap my face as many times as you can stand. Just tap, tap, tap like that. <clears throat> that will drive likes, it will drive the algorithm and make the TikTok gods and maybe somebody in TikTok will hit the heat button for me. <laughs> I doubt it. They don't typically favor 40, 54 year old women um, unless I'm dancing naked on this app, which you guys don't wanna see, trust me. So um, anyway, welcome. And if you have any questions about you know the book, The Galveston Diet, so this guy is doing well. So we just published on January 10th, and although we did not make the New York Times bestseller list because they get to pick and choose what books go on there, um, we did make the Wall Street Journal bestseller list as well as Publishers Weekly and the Amazon bestseller list. So. Super excited about that, and I have to say thank you. Hi, Blake, to all of you, because it is you, your participation, your belief in me, your wanting to learn more about this that has driven those book sales. So for allowing us to be number six in the nation for nonfiction books for sale, hardcover, that's pretty freaking amazing. So um, really, 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 um, so it, who's watching, who has gotten the book? Let me see it in the comments. If you've had, if you've gotten the book, what you think of it, good, bad, ugly, and, um, any questions that I can answer for you bought the book, working on the recipe, seeing your doctor tomorrow. How can you convince him you need hormone replacement therapy? So if you have no contraindications, meaning you don't have a history of an estrogen receptor, um, positive blood, blood, clot, you don't have active liver disease or active cardiovascular disease, you know, there's there's very few actual contra, absolute contraindications. You deserve the conversation about hormone replacement therapy with your doctor. And if that's what you guys want me to talk about, oh, so, um, so um, I'm reading some of the comments, so I got off track for a little bit. Um, I have a blog, so if you go to galvestondiet.com, or just go to the link in bio up here. And thank you for the likes, guys. Everybody just joining, take your finger, tap my face as much as you can, hit that share button if you think that this video would be um, would be helpful to some of your friends. And if you don't follow me, I welcome you to follow me. So I'm, I'm getting an alert from TikTok. Hi, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haber. If you're just joining me, don't know who I am, I popped up on your FYP. I'm a board certified OBGYN. I specialize in care of the menopausal woman wherever she is in her menopause journey, pre, I mean, peri, post, wherever. And when I, and I also have a background in training in nutrition. So I have created a wellness program, nutrition and lifestyle program called the Galveston Diet because in medicine, diet is a lifestyle. It's not... Are you on a diet? It's what is your diet? So this is, I know it gets misconstrued in popular culture. I hate toxic diet culture. This is not what I'm promoting here. I'm promoting lifestyle changes. So you've got the book. All right, awesome. Um, okay, let me um, look at the questions real quick. So why now we got a pap smear every three years when you ask for it every year, your doctor pushes me. So Here's, you know, cervical cancer is caused from the human papillomavirus. So you, if you are low risk for HPV and you've tested negative for HPV in, with your pap smear, with a normal pap smear, that puts you in a very low risk category. Now, if your risk changes, meaning you have a new sexual partner or you have autoimmune disease or something that would make you higher risk, then you can get a pap every year. And so we are, you know, trying to intervene when necessary but only when necessary. So we probably were doing, before we had the HPV test with the pap smear, you did need it every year, but now that we can add in the HPV test, we can space that out a little bit more. It doesn't need mean you don't need a well woman exam. You know, well, your pap is a tiny part of your whole well woman exam. Remember, it's just screening for cervical cancer, that's it. Um, 
Okay, guys, thank you for the likes. Thank you for hitting that, tapping my face and giving me those likes. That helps drive the algorithm and keep me relevant on this platform. Um, let's see. Uh, bought the book, Working on the Recipes. How can you convince your doctor? So on my blogs at galvestondiet.com, I have a whole blog on how to advocate for yourself for hormone replacement therapy. And I have articles you can download to hand to your doctor. I have words that you can put in your mouth to say, you know, you deserve the conversation. You may elect not to do it. You may be high risk, whatever, but every single woman needs to demand the conversation and at least the option. And if you choose not to, I respect that. I respect that. You don't have to take medication for heart disease. You don't have to take blood pressure medicine. You don't have to do anything, but you deserve proper counseling and treatment. And sometimes we have to actually have to educate our healthcare providers because they just don't have the time to educate themselves. Yes, Taylor, you can still get signed copies. Um, if you go to our website and you click on the book page, like you, the front of the thing says book, online program, coaching, go to click on the book and the book will have where you can buy the signed copies. There are some left at this point. Um, okay, so um, Hugs from Oregon. Hi, your copy was delivered minutes ago. Uh, looking forward to read it ASAP right on Dr. Haver. Awesome, awesome. I'm actually working on another book that is more of a medical menopause book where I'll have all the information on advocating for yourself, on hormone replacement therapy, on your options, you know, what your options are, uh, you know, just like, like what to expect when you can't expect anymore. <laughs> You know, A Woman's Guide to Menopause. I don't know what the title is quite yet, but I am working on that next book. So, um, but this book is a primer for that. This book covers your menopause journey, lifestyle, what can you do, nutrition, how to hit your nutritional bases. I mean, I the feedback we are getting is that it is life changing, life changing. So, um, book should arrive soon. You have hormone driven cancer. You will never be able to do HRT. Okay. I get it. There are so many of you who have contraindications and hormone replacement therapy will not be an option for you. I respect that. And you know, when I counsel my menopause patients, I say we have a toolkit here of things, okay? And in our toolbox to be as healthy as possible, our best life, we have nutrition first. That is the first thing we cover, okay? And I set them up with nutritional parameters. We look at their muscle mass, their body fat. I have a very specialized clinic. Um, we talk about exercise, both resistance and cardio. We and why, those are important. We don't exercise to be skinny. We exercise to be strong, okay? Let me say that again. We do not exercise to be skinny. We exercise to be strong. Strong heart, strong bones, strong muscles, strong mind. The end. Um, we talk about pharmacologic options, so hormones and non-hormones, okay? If you're having symptoms, there are non-hormonal pharmacologic options that have been successful for treating some of the symptoms of menopause. We talk about sleep, we talk about stress reduction, you know, that, that's all part of the toolkit and all very, very important. So if something gets taken out of your toolkit because of life, then we cover all of the other bases in detail that you have to work harder um, on these other things to make sure that you're gonna have your best life ever. Um, let's see, when is the best time to consume my fiber? Lord, y'all, I left my fiber in the bathroom, hang on. <laughs> um, so I am a fasting purist. I don't have any calories during my fast. And so because I take my collagen and my fiber together, I'm, it's a giant, cup. We're walking around my house going to find it. I break my fast at whatever time. And then after I'm done with my fast, I mix up my drink. Here it goes. I'm going to get it. I mix up my drink and the fiber together because I'm lazy and it's just easy. I shake out my supplements. I put them in a little bowl and then I just sip on this guy. So I have a 30 ounce cool tumbler because fiber when it absorbs water becomes gelatinous and some the texture can kind of get to you so i dilute it quite a bit sometimes i'll drink half of it and refill this with water keep stirring it so that you know everything stays um solidified i mean uh suspended sorry and then just sip on it over a couple of hours in the afternoon while i take my supplements one by one so hopefully that helps um okay so, 15 and type 1 diabetic and doing the omega-3 and vitamin D. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I love that. Um, 
and hopefully his uh, diabetes is in wonderful control. Not because of my supplement, but um, you only have a sec, but as a 38-year-old Cushing's and now Addison's, you just love my education and advocacy. You are so very welcome. I love doing it. It is my passion in life. I feel like it is my purpose, and I'm so happy to be here. Um, you're on HRT, but having insomnia, your dose may need to go up. And so that is something you need to talk to your healthcare provider about to see... Um, uh, if that could be the right thing for you, but you know, insomnia has a lot of causes. So make sure you're doing all the things with sleep hygiene and everything. And I have blogs about that too on our website, 46 and having severe hair loss. It's frightening. Is that due to menopause? Maybe there's multiple causes of hair loss. Okay. There's nutritional causes, autoimmune causes. There are hormonal causes, you know, so it's kind of hard sometimes to tease out and pinpoint because they can overlap. You can have more than one cause. And so I have a, I have a, which I think is a pretty nice YouTube video. It's a long video all about hair loss, options, treatment, causes, things to ask your doctor about. If you want to go check that out on our YouTube channel as well. Um, let's see. You're 45 and the doctor says not perimenopausal, but gain belly fat help. Okay. Doctors are terrible at diagnosing perimenopause because we don't have a blood test for it. Perimenopause takes someone who really understands perimenopause and even OBGYNs don't understand it very well. Okay. It's not something we spent any time on in school. Okay. And if you haven't kept up with the thought leaders and the latest literature, you're not going to know. And so there's a big failure in the medical community about being able to diagnose and treat perimenopause. I can tell you statistically by your age, it is nearly impossible at 45 that you are not somewhere in your perimenopausal journey. Estrogen help with UTIs. If you are postmenopausal and having recurrent urinary tract infections, the number one treatment for that is vaginal estrogen not antibiotics, not, re not recurrent antibiotics, okay? What's happened is that the tissue of your bladder and urethra is becoming less resistant to infection, less resistant to inflammation, and that because of vaginal atrophy associated with declining estrogen levels and the treatment of choice that works is vaginal estrogen, which is very, very safe, zero increased risk for clots and zero increased risk for any cancers, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, shared the live. Thank you. So some housekeeping. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, founder of the Galveston Diet, a lifestyle and nutrition plan for women in midlife. The book got published January 10th and we did make the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Um, if you guys saw me crying on TikTok about the New York Times, I had a pity party for myself because they, even though our sales were in the top of the nation, um, they pick and choose who they want on their list and they chose not to put us on there. And that was a gut punch for me, but I'm over it. And they, I have no control over it. And they turned their nose up probably at this word right here, which you know what? I can't blame people for doing that. When I named it a diet, I named it because that in medicine, a diet is a pattern of eating. And this was a medical plan for my patients. And then it got big on social media and very popular and then toxic diet culture and all that. And if I could do anything different in the world, I would have changed this name and not included the word diet, but it's done. It, we're here. We're here with it. And it is, it's a medical program for health and wellness. So I, um, who has the book and what do you think of it? I want to hear, I want to see it in the comments. Um, and if you want to go check out the book, if you haven't ordered it yet, you've been on the fence, then you can do it at Amazon. All your booksellers can do it. We have a book page with all the links to every bookseller, to the eBooks and to the Audible. I recorded the Audible. It's all available, even in the United Kingdom. Um, oh, it's backwards. The Galveston Diet <laughs> is the name. The Galveston Diet. Um, love it. Just got it. So excited to dive in. Got it. And so far just ordered it. It's backwards. What's the name? Galveston diet. Um, let's see. I have it. Love it. Um, me, the Galveston protocol, any thoughts on COVID vaccine triggering menopause? I, we don't know. We don't know The like, literally this is breaking science and everything like menopause is going to happen to a hundred percent of people who live long enough. hundred percent of people with ovaries who live long enough are going to go through menopause. So if COVID triggered it or not, or stress or the COVID, you know, COVID's doing weird shit to people. And so vaccines, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. There doesn't seem to be a correlation yet, but I cannot say in the future that it will not. Um, you just got your first script for hormones and can't afford it. Okay. What did they give you? All right. Ask for 
If you have to have, if you still have your uterus, ask for a generic estradiol patch and oral progesterone in the form of Prometrium, which is generic, okay? Which is perfectly safe and actually probably one of the safest progestins out there, okay? That will probably cost you even out of pocket if you shop around and go on the apps like GoodRx or the Mark Cuban Pharmacy, you can probably get those for around $30 to $50 a month, okay? That is about as affordable as it, it's a, as hormone replacement therapy is going to get for you, okay? So if you went to a traditional doctor, now if you guys are going to doctors and they're like, I'm only going to prescribe X, leave. That is bad medicine. Their job is to give you every option in the book and to not personally profit off of the sale of a pharmaceutical agent that drives me crazy. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. Um, 56 wish you had the book 15 years younger. I wish I was doing eating this way 15 years ago. Trust me. <laughs> um, just bought on audible. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. You're 55 with a Mirena IUD. You have no idea if you're in menopause because no period. What tests can you do? Okay. We can diagnose full menopause. We can tell you if you're postmenopausal easily, simple blood tests, estradiol and FSH are kind of the gold standards that we go by. What we're not great at because the hormones fluctuate so much is utilizing a blood test to diagnose perimenopause. We are not good at that. We, that is not the way to go. And so the diagnosis of perimenopause is made by talking to the patient, listening to her, believing what she's telling you and doing blood tests to rule out other diseases that kind of act like perimenopause, like, for example, autoimmune disease, arthritis, or rheumatoid arthritis, um, hypothyroidism. All things that can symptomatically in some ways look very similar to perimenopause. So I do blood work to rule out those things. I also track, you know, in my clinic, nutritional markers and inflammation markers and all kinds of stuff. But rarely in perimenopause do I ever do an estrogen blood test. And I, it's not helpful. One-time blood test because your estrogen levels are ping-ponging like crazy. So... Um, this information is actually in here and, um, yeah, so bought it on audible. Is there testing to be done to help with fat? Um, really the best way around fat, I'm not sure what you mean. Give me a little more quantification on that question. Um, okay. I am hot flash help. Okay. The gold standard in treatment for hot flashes is estrogen. Okay is, is going to be estrogen therapy. And, um, if that, if you're not a candidate for that, then I recommend there's clonidine and Neurontin are kind of the, my top two for non-hormonal pharmacologic help. People have claimed to have been helped, but the, the studies don't show clearly there's a benefit for things like soy and black cohosh and, and other over the counter things. But other people think that it's helpful. They're very benign and, um, you might want to give it a try. Turmeric has other people think that it's helpful. They're very benign and um, you might want to give it a try. Turmeric has. That's where my doctors are failing. They won't listen. It's so frustrating. I understand. I understand. And you just got to keep kissing frogs till you find a princess. You know, on my database, I have a list of healthcare providers that you guys have recommended. It's called Recommended Physicians. It's on the website if you go to galvestondiet.com. I also, at the North American Menopause Society, also has a list of physicians. Thank you, Callie, for the rose. I really, really appreciate it. Um, can you control hormones with diet only? It depends on what hormones you're talking about. So the hormones that control where and how you store fat and your hunger and satiety, yes, you can control it with the, you can, it can be, the quality of your diet can be very, very helpful, okay? Um, controlling your sex hormones, your estrogen, your progesterone, and your testosterone with nutrition, you cannot make the ovaries make more hormones with nutrition, okay? You can make your body work more efficiently with the hormones that you have, but no supplement to date that I've seen in the literature and no, no food is going to make you sporadically make more estrogen. Now, people with healthier diets tend to go through menopause a little bit later. So, um, so their ovaries function for longer because they're less inflamed. Um, 
So um, I have lots of um, non-hormonal options on my website. I have a whole blog on hot flashes and how you can help them if you guys want to go and check it out. Um, how about joint pain and perimenopause? That was one of my symptoms. My hips, I'm actually feeling it right now, went crazy. I couldn't sleep. It was just debilitating. I couldn't sit for very long. Um, and I was trying to see patients and my hips were just rocking the house. And a combination of, you know, good nutrition, hormone replacement therapy for me, turmeric, and being better about my exercise, I got out of running and I started walking on an incline treadmill. I got really good about stretching and yoga things. I kind of wasn't doing that well because in my former life, before I went back to school and learned about nutrition, did all the things, I worked out to be skinny. I'm going to admit it. The only reason I was working out was to be thin. That was the goal. Because in my mind and what I was taught in medical school, thin equaled healthy. And people thought I looked great. And so now I know that's wrong. I weigh more now than I ever did like 10, 15 years ago, and I am healthier than I've ever been. This number on the scale that I would weigh today used to send me into oblivion. Like, and I've just learned so much about, thank you for the rose, thank you for the rose, thank you for the rose. So what were the name drugs, estrogen and progesterone? It's estradiol, that is the chemical name of the, the, it's chemically identical to what your ovaries used to make, estradiol, E-S-T-R-A-D-I-O-L, and progesterone is progesterone. That's it, okay? Um, thyroid, okay. Uh, the Galveston Diet, yes, that is the name of the book, The Galveston Diet. It is not a diet in the way that most lay people would think about diets. This was a medical nutrition and wellness program for my patients, so I named it Diet Medically, it started out me in the clinic making little Xerox copies of my program for my patients. And now it's blown up into a giant social media craziness and a book. And so, um, so don't turn your nose up at the word diet. Uh, it's not what you think. And so if y'all could give me some validation here, who's read the book, what do you think it is? <laughs> um, for the people who are watching, put it in the comments. Um, Okay, when you start experiencing bleeding changes, heavier, lighter, skipping, not skipping, coming every two weeks, nothing's off the table in perimenopause. Yes, it could be perimenopause, but it could also be something else, especially if they're getting heavier, more clotty. So you always need an evaluation. It could be a polyp, it could be a growth, it could be something else you don't wanna miss a gynecologic issue outside of perimenopause. But absolutely, if all the tests are normal and they don't see anything in the uterus, this could be a symptom of perimenopause, but you still need an evaluation, okay? So you need a good gynecologist for it. Um, dryness from perimenopause versus so Sogren's. So that's hard to tease out sometimes, you know, and they're treated very differently. Vaginal dryness or skin dryness, all right, vaginal dryness is treated with, with lubricants and then vaginal estrogen, whereas Sogren's is treated, if it's bad, with steroids or, or autoimmune, you know, immune drugs. Um, so that can be, that takes a really specialist to be able to tease that out. Eating lifestyle, a lifestyle change. Can't wait to read it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Amazon has it on sale for $19 right now, but if you want to support an independent bookseller, which I do recommend, or your local Barnes and Nobles, you know, they're carrying it. Target has it. Walmart has it. Um, uh, we have links to independent booksellers. The signed copies are with an independent bookseller here in outside. I live outside of Houston in Galveston. So we found a really wonderful called Brazos Books. It's a little mom and pop bookshop. They are fabulous. And they bought 1,100 copies of the book. 1100. I went and signed them and they've sold 800 and something. So there's still a couple hundred copies left. So if you care that I went in there and I wrote my signature as neat as possible in my doctor signature, you can get a signed copy of the book through Brazos. And that link is on my website at galvestondiet.com. And you um, just click on the book link. There's also a link to it in the link in bio at the top of my TikTok page. So if you're just joining me, my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a menopause specialist, board certified OBGYN, and I'm also certified in culinary medicine. So I have an extensive nutrition background to help myself through my menopause body composition changes and weight gain and to help my patients who were going through the same thing. I said, no more calories in, calories out. We got to do something different here. This isn't working for me or my patients or anybody else. I did a deep dive 
into nutrition. I went back to school to learn about nutrition and developed this wellness and nutrition program, which I named the Galveston Diet because I live here in Galveston, Texas, and diet because medically diet is a pattern of eating to teach myself and my patients how to utilize this to be as healthy as possible for the rest of our lives. Um, there is an audible version, yes. That's all on my website if you want to go check it out. Um, there are so many HRTs. How is one selected for me? So I tend to put people what, I am, what I'm on. <laughs> I am on generic estradiol and generic progesterone, and that's usually where I start with patients. Um, let's see. Um, can someone in their late 20s benefit from this book diet? Yes. This is for men. This is for everyone. The principles of good nutrition, the principles of anti-inflammatory nutrition, hold fast for everyone, okay? I wrote it for me and my patients, and then they shared it with their cousins and their brothers and their kids, and they cook for their family, and they feed everybody this, and everybody got healthier. And go figure. So, um, but you will find stuff as far as being a woman in midlife and your menopause journey that will resonate with you in this book. And so, um, is there anything hormonal you can do during perimenopause? Yes! Okay, your, your new OB-GYN says no because they weren't trained and they weren't educated. And so, yes, 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 you can be treated during perimenopause. Most OB-GYNs weren't taught how to do it and don't know how to do it. And so, you've got to find someone who's willing to treat you, okay? Because starting a perimenopause and continuing through your postmenopause is where the biggest long-term health benefits are, like decreasing the risk of... Alzheimer's, decreasing the risk of dementia, decreasing the risk of cardiovascular disease. The earlier you start supporting yourself in this journey, the healthier you are going to be long-term. Um, and thank you for the follow. So again, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, OBGYN, board certified. This is my book, The Galveston Diet. I know it's backwards for you guys. Um, is Yasmin a good option for perimenopause? Absolutely. You know, every, and I tell my patients this, it's trial and error. I don't know how your body's going to react to this. I don't know what your individual estrogen receptors are and how, what's going on in your brain. Okay. And so we have to be patient with trying to find the right combination if we're going with the birth control route. And I usually only do that in perimenopause, early perimenopause, um, uh, because it's cheap, it's easy. And sometimes they need contraception. So I get to Kept, you know, clear everything with one. So yes, joint pain is absolutely a symptom. What have been your symptoms? I want to see it in the comments because it's so powerful for the 400 and something of you watching to see what other people are going through. Okay. Um, the book is available in the UK, the link to the UK, Amazon, it's on Amazon UK. Just type in Galveston diet. It's there. It has a white cover. Okay. The publisher in the UK decided to change the cover. The inside is the same. All right. This is the U S this is the UK. I don't know why they did that. I would not have done that. It um, Okay, stiffness, joint pain, fatigue, heart palpitations, joint pain, anxiety, um, brain fog, exhaustion, brain fog, joint pain, anxiety, belly fat, hair loss, holla, same here, um, constant Achilles pain, bless your heart, um, extremely heavy bleeding causing anemia, endometrial cancer ruled out, joint pain, brain fog, heart palpitations, pain, anxiety, hip pain, yep, um, your full menopause, always having to pee, <laughs> uh, headaches, um, weight gain, night sweats. I love, love, love when you guys are commenting. This is awesome, 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 awesome. All right, everybody, if you resonate as I call out the symptoms and you have these symptoms, give me likes. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, everybody, if you resonate as I call out the symptoms and you have these symptoms, give me likes. different is your body aching brain fog who has brain fog let me see the lights tap my face tap my face tap my face if you are suffering from brain fog okay i was just doing research on the brain fog this morning for the new book um anxiety who has noticed anxiety out of nowhere out of nowhere okay who has noticed anxiety who has been dismissed by their health care provider just told you're too young. It can't be perimenopause. I don't know what you're talking about. Has that happened to you? I want to see it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, okay. Yep. 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 Frozen shoulder. Who's got frozen shoulder? 
Okay, if you guys are having joint pain, hip pain, any kind of musculoskeletal stuff, Dr. Vonda Wright on Instagram is an orthopedic surgeon and this is her jam. Menopause and joints is her jam. And she has so much education and information around there. She talks about osteoporosis and stuff. Dr. Vonda Wright, love her. V-O-N-D-A-W-R-I-G-H-T. Love her, love her, love her so much. Okay, um, who's got headaches? New onset headaches out of nowhere. Nothing has changed. Who, thank you, Shim, for the rose. I really appreciate it. Who has headaches? Hit my face. Give me the likes if you've got headaches and menopause. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, hit the, keep those likes coming if you have it. Yep, lots of people having headaches. Um, heart palpitations. Who, all of a sudden, you've been checked out, you've had all the scans and whatever, your heart is healthy, but you are having palpitations, okay? Turns out the sinoatrial node, which controls your heart rate, has estrogen receptors and the decline of estrogen is associated with thank you for the roses thank you my god she's like throwing roses at my feet this is amazing um who is having palpitations i'm seeing that yeah the likes are going crazy right now hair loss who has hair loss anybody hair loss associated with associated yep lots of likes lots of likes lots of likes hair loss was one of my things one of my things for sure um Okay, your OBGYN puts you on low, low estrogen. So for probably the majority of patients who are symptomatic in perimenopause, a low-dose birth control can be very, very helpful. Very helpful. And that is something I do quite often. So low, low estrogen is one of my favorites because it's one of the lowest dose estrogens out there. Um, will progesterone cause weight gain? There are no randomized control studies that show progesterone causes weight gain. Now, progesterone can make makes your breast larger and more tender it can make you retain a little bit of water but it's not going to make you gain fat okay it can make you kind of bloaty um but it's not it's not because of new fat deposition okay thank you for the rose thank you thank you aslin for the rose you, you guys are so sweet um how long does it last the health risks associated with menopause last the rest of your life I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm not trying to be an asshole. The health risks associated with menopause last the rest of your life. The menopausal symptoms that are life disrupting, it depends. Some women tell me 12 years, 15 years. Some say three or four. You know, it, every time I read a new article, the, the age range gets longer. So all bets are off. All bets are off. Um, Uh, A1C is up, hard to lose weight. Have balanced everything. Bless your heart. I hear you. I hear you. I know how hard it is. Um, I know how hard it is. So bless your heart. Uh, do you go through menopause while on birth control pills? The process of menopause is your ovaries being systematically destroyed. Okay. The healthy ovarian tissue being replaced by fibrosis and scarring. That is what menopause is. Okay. That pr process goes on even while you're on birth control pills. So you may, even off on birth control pills, have some symptoms, okay? Birth control pills, I tell my patients, the best thing I could ever do for you is to transplant your 25-year-old ovaries back in your body, but I can't do that. That ship has sailed. So anything I'm gonna give you pharmacologically at this point is never gonna be as good as what you had before. Okay, so we must look at nutrition. We must look at exercise. We must look at stress reduction. We must make sure you're sleeping. We must maximize your nutrition, you know? And we may need to add other medicines, you know, to help you with your symptoms, even with HRT. So you just have to be realistic about what hormone therapy can do for you. Um, you stopped your hormone therapy several months ago because it's too expensive. Okay, you have other options. You don't have to pay the premium of the pellets. It is not necessary. They're not better. They're not safer. They're not more efficacious. I tell you what they do do. They make your healthcare provider rich. And so they are personally profiting. So if your provider did not offer you anything else other than a pellet, that is a red flag to me, that they don't have your best interest at heart and you are going to become a cash cow for them to come in every three months to come get your fix, okay? When they could have easily written a prescription for the exact same thing that would have cost just as safe and efficacious would have cost you a tenth of the price. That would have made them much So I said what I said. Um... Okay, uh, is estrogen, estrogen bad for us? I don't know of any studies that show that estrogen is toxic. It
It might be helpful for some, but not like a clear study that shows dramatic improvement of symptoms or disease. The gold standard of treatment is hormone replacement therapy. If you can't take HRT, or then we start looking at the other options. Um, let's see. Your B12 is insanely high and still going up. I'm not sure why that's happening to you. Uh, Mona Lisa. I would not do the Mona Lisa. Estrogen, vaginal estrogen is the gold standard of therapy, not surgery, not laser for genital syndrome, genital urinary syndrome of menopause, okay? Vaginal estrogen. Do not go straight to, and it is not ever, the American College of OBGYN and North American Menopause Society do not recommend it. They think it is dangerous, okay? The man who invented it has lost his license, I think, okay? It's not been approved does no one has proven that it says what it i would not i would not um you got the book today yay the galveston diet so happy so happy so happy can't wait for you to dive into it can't wait for you to dive into it um okay options for people with clot risk so it depends on what your risk is because transdermal forms of estrogen do not raise your clotting factors Oral does, so you're not a candidate for oral, but there's not a study that has shown that transdermal increases your clot risk. So depending on what you and your doctor decide, you need someone who knows their shit, who reads the articles and the studies and keeps up with this stuff, that you will probably benefit from a transdermal option. Um, or shit, who reads the articles and the studies and keeps up with this stuff, that you will probably benefit from a transdermal option. Um, so... Where do I begin when I recognize my symptoms are influencing my daily life? That is a great question. I wish I could just say, make an appointment with your ob -GYN. But, you know, um, most ob aren't willing to talk. Well, not, not most. Great question. I wish I could just say, make an appointment with your ob -GYN. But, you know, um, most ob aren't willing to talk. Well, not, not most. Find some ob that find some ob that are not even willing to discuss menopause treatment with you. They're like, you're just getting older. This is a normal part of life. Get over it. Welcome to 50. Welcome to 40. That's not okay. All right. That is not ever, ever, ever an acceptable answer. Aging is normal. Suffering is not. Aging is normal. Suffering is not. Um, HRT, your doctor said hormones are more risky than continuing the symptoms. Finding a new doctor. I have your book. Find a new doctor. Find a new doctor. Aging is normal. Suffering is not. Uh, you're getting the book from Amazon tomorrow. Thank you for your support and reading it. And I hope you find information in here that will help you lead a healthier, more fulfilled and productive life. Because that was the goal of why I wrote this. Um, um, how many years may you be on HRT? It depends on when you start. So um, no one is recommending a new start, a new start HRT over the age of 60, meaning you've never been on hormones and you've been, or you've been menopausal greater than 10 years. You've kind of missed your window. The, um, but if you've successfully been on hormone therapy for a long time, the old recommendations were stop at 60. Now it is basically, let's just look at it year by year and see how you're doing. You just ordered the book on Amazon. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, okay, so I want to read something to you guys. Um, okay. From the first day of our life, life until the last. Okay, I'm read to you from the book. All right. Our bodies are always changing. This is part of aging, a natural process that no one can escape. But the changes that happen to women in midlife are unique and often unsettling. Suddenly, we're having odd symptoms like hot flashes and the accumulation of strange new weight gain around our midsections. Our skin can be very dry or wrinkling more. We have joint pain, hair loss, headaches, bloating, and worsening anxiety or depression. Sleep becomes elusive. Sexual intercourse can hurt. Little things set us off. A lot of this may be happening to you right now. And trust me, you're not alone. Let me introduce you to someone who knows exactly what you're going through. Me. I was a busy physician, mom, wife, in my late 40s. My main health challenge at the time was polycystic ovarian syndrome, a condition caused by insulin resistance in which insulin can't do its job of ushering glucose into the cells for energy. PCOS leads to erratic periods, acne, infertility, ovarian cysts, and unwanted hair growth. 
About one in 10 women of childbearing age has PCOS and the majority are overweight or even obese, but I was among the 30% of normal weight. Fortunately, it was treatable and in my case, taking hormones really helped me. Then came a death in my family. I lost my brother, Bob, to liver failure. I was despondent. He, had, he was my daughter's favorite uncle, a creative fun spirit with whom I had a special bond. We were jitterbug dance partners um, when I was younger, winning dance compositions all over Louisiana. When he died, I was heartbroken and losing him brought a crushing pain. Grief does strange things to each of us. Um, night after night, for me, I coped by binging. Night after night of long clinic shifts, I stood in front of my pantry gobbling handfuls of my kids' goldfish crackers. I'd wash them down with glasses of wine. Pretty quickly, I gained nearly 20 pounds. I looked different person and I felt miserable. With my medical background, I knew that at my age, it might be time to come off hormones for a while. So I talked to my own doctor and we agreed that I should. But taking the hormones had masked the perimenopause symptoms that occur during midlife. So within two weeks of being off of them, everything abruptly changed and not for the better. I had hot flashes and I felt like I was burning from the inside out. Um, along came sleepless nights and most troubling of all, the fuzzy and forgetful feeling called brain fog. My long, thick hair started falling out by the brushful. My skin felt parched from head to toe and I had to completely change my skincare routine to keep my skin moisturized. My body ached so much that I kidded with a friend I'd give up my firstborn to get relief. My sleep became a recurring nightmare of multiple awakenings uh, throughout the night, first drenched in sweat and then freezing once the hot flash passed. I knew that I was going through a period of hormonal change, perimenopause, but the symptoms it produced were so profoundly intense, I was alarmed. This on top of the weight gain? I was a mess. <laughs> then I heard my brother Bob's voice in my head, girl, you don't have to wallow in this anymore. Get yourself, you got yourself into this, get yourself out of it. I went to work on my weight first. I did exactly what I and the other doctors had always counseled patients to do. Work out more, eat less. Work out more, eat less. My efforts paid off, sort of. I'd lose a pound or two, but that was it. Then the weight would come right back on. I was starving myself and working out obsessively, but hardly dropping any weight. It was very frustrating. I just wanted to fix me, but nothing I tried was sticking. I realized that I was struggling with the same weight, weight issues many of my patients had told me about. They would sit in the exam rooms, often clutching paper gowns, and ask for advice about losing weight, frustrated with the fact that they had changed their diet and exercise habits, yet the scale kept moving in the wrong direction. I'd spend the next several minutes speaking with them about the combined power of diet and exercise. But for the majority of these women at this age, what I had been taught and had, what had worked for me in the past um, stopped working. They had fought for years to shed the stubborn weight without much permanent success. And I'm sorry that it took me having the same thing happen to me to change my tune, but that's the truth. When my own good advice didn't help me, it really hit me that I was doing something wrong. I threw myself into researching weight management and human metabolism, specifically as it related to women and menopause. Medical school and my OB-GYN residency had taught us that calories in, calories out was the only way, but clearly there had to be another. I didn't have all the answers, but I wanted them so I could feel better about myself and then I could guide and teach women how to reach the weight, the energy level, and the good health that they wanted and deserved. I yearned to understand why we have such a tough time losing weight and keeping it off, especially as we approach and enter midlife. My deep passion for finding answers combined with motivation and determination took me to some very unexpected and exciting places. What kept popping up in the research were three main things, intermittent fasting, an anti-inflammatory approach to nutrition that actually can help all these hormonal changes, and important new science on the ratios of protein, carbohydrates, and fat we need to consume to burn this extra fat. Could these be the keys? And I go on and on and on. So. That's an introduction to the book. If you haven't gotten it yet and you feel like my words resonate with you, I hope that um, you 
can afford it. If not, I know that you can request your local library to order it and they can have it. You can find it at our website at galvestondiet.com or just go to the link in our bio at Dr. Mary Claire up there and um, we have a link to the book page. We do have an audio book. The e-version is available on whatever platform, Kindle or whatever you want it on. And you can buy the book from your local bookseller. You know, we have indie, um, indie searches as well that can help you get the book if you want to support someone local as well. I don't sell the book through our website. The publisher sells the book. So, um, it's called The Galveston Diet. It is a lifestyle change. It's not. So the audiobook is available and I read it. So if you can stand listening to my voice for about eight hours straight, then you can get the audiobook. Um, we don't discuss recurrent UTIs in the book, but I'm ha- you know, I've discussed it earlier in this live. Um, what is a good probiotic? So I take probiotics are found in food, but my palate, my taste, I don't eat a lot of foods that are rich in probiotics outside of yogurt, probably three times a week. But if you are drinking kombucha or meat, you know, eating miso, kimchi, sauerkraut, Chinese pickles on a regular basis, you probably have your bases covered with probiotics. But the one I take is called garden of life women's 85 billion. So when you're looking for a good probiotic, billions is better. You make sure they do third-party testing that what, because the FDA does not regulate supplements, they're considered food, um, that you want something in the billions and lot of different species of microbes in the probiotic. You don't want one with just one. You want like a big fishing pond to go in. Okay. Um, look, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just bought through Amazon. We'll be receiving the book soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're just on hormone replacement therapy and progesterone. What can you take for your libido? So libido is tough. Libido, I don't like the term libido. In medicine, we call it hypoactive sexual desire disorder. And there are kind of five causes why a woman will suffer from this. So it's only a problem if it's a problem, okay? It's only a problem if it causes you distress. No, but there's no definition of normal sexual activity or normal libido, okay? That's not a thing. If you are distressed by your lack of desire for sexual relations, then that is hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Okay, and I have a screening test that I give my patients for that. So, but the five causes of decreased hypoactive sexual desire disorder, relationship disorder, if you do not have a good relationship with your partner, you probably will not desire them sexually. Okay, the end. I cannot fix that with medication. Number two, so then that leaves the medical things. All right, so we have desire, which is what happens in the brain arousal, which happens in the pelvis, orgasmic, some people don't orgasm, okay? Do you know that 15% of women, 10 to 15%, have never had an orgasm in their life? Do we talk about that? Can we talk about that? What do you think would happen in the world of research and medicine if 10 to 15% of men in the world were anorgasmic? What, I, I want to see what you think would happen. I want to see in the comments. Okay, I think it would be a national fucking emergency. And I think that there would be billions and billions of dollars spent on this research and treatment. Okay, Um, so desire disorder can be treated with medications, but it's not perfect. Okay, orgasmic disorder, you need a sexual medicine specialist. The arousal disorder, again, you probably need a specialist, but it can be treated for a woman with vaginal Viagra. You need more blood flow. So what happens in the brain is here. What happens in the pelvis, the clitoris becomes enlarged, the vagina elongates, you have increased mucus production. It's the physiologic response to a stimulus, to a sexual stimulus that gets you going. Okay. So, um, so what are the treatment options? So there are pharmacologic options that have been shown to be helpful in women. One, there are two that kind of work kind of the same. They are work at the level of the neuroreceptor in the brain. And they are Addy and Vilesi. Okay, very expensive. No generics are available. The companies are discounting it. If you want to go through them and get coupons and stuff from their website, you can talk to your doctor about that. And for and then the other end of the treatment spectrum is testosterone. Okay. Um, there is no level of testosterone that's therapeutic and you definitely can become toxic on testosterone. So when I prescribe testosterone to a patient, we go through all her options. She picks testosterone, you know, we decide testosterone is her best thing to try. I do a compounding pharmacy. I have a local compounding pharmacist mix it up close to her and then we give it a three month trial. If it doesn't help in three months for improvement of your sexual desire, it is not going to help. 
Okay. Increasing the dose will not help. So, um, uh, okay. They're talking about vibrators in the comments. You go girl. I love it. Uh, the we vibe melt. Um, okay. So that is my tutorial on sexual, female sexual function. I am so happy to talk to you guys about that. Uh, yeah. And then relationship disorder can't help. Um, Here's the other thing. So there's a couple of great resources for you if you're suffering from this and you don't want to talk to your doctor. Dr. Kelly Casperson, C-A-S-P-E-R-S-O-N. She has a podcast called You Are Not Broken. She has a book called You Are Not Broken and she breaks this shit down like nobody's business. There's also a book by Dr. Emily Nagowski called Come As You Are. Absolutely mind-blowing. Blew my mind to read the book. Really helped me understand. Helped me counsel patients better. It is absolutely groundbreaking and you can get it Anywhere you buy books, okay? Kelly's book is on Amazon. You are not broken. Somebody write it in the comments so everybody can see it. Um, how often do I do blood work on HRT? Never. <laughs> I treat symptoms, not arbitrary numbers, okay? There is not a therapeutic range. We do blood work when we have therapeutic ranges. For example, hypothyroidism. You need to get your TSH between da-da-da and da-da-da. We do not have that for estrogen. If your level's 100 and my level 100, you could be skating through life and happy. I could be fucking miserable and need more, okay? We are, bio, I, we are biodiverse individuals. Women and hormones are biodiverse. There's not a one size fits all. So don't let fall into the trap of someone trying to give you a therapeutic range. I talk to my patients. How are you doing, honey? Sorry, honey. Some of you think honey's weird. I like my people. Um, I think it's great. So I'm doing great. My life, I'm sleeping. I feel amazing. I'm exercising again. I blah, 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 my nutrition's on point and all the things. I'm like, yes, you're on the right dose for you. Perfect. Just bought your book in Kentucky. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yes, I do see patients. I see patients from out of state. You have to come to me. I am outside of Houston, okay? Um, on my website, galvesandiet.com, there is a link to make an appointment with me. And I think we're full. But um, so... Uh, Prebiotics, you just need fiber, a diet rich in fiber. That is the prebiotic. You don't have to take an extra prebiotic. Probably if it's in a pill, a little pill, and this is your prebiotic, that ain't shit. You need 25 grams of fiber per day, okay, in your diet, in food, okay? I supplement with the Galveston Diet Fiber, which is in here right now, to get me to 35. I'm pushing to 35 because of my family history of colon cancer. Mm. Um... So, um, you purchased the book. Can't wait to read it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, the book is the Galveston diet. It is a wellness and treatment protocol for women in midlife to utilize nutrition, to lower your inflammation levels and get as healthy as possible. One of the pleasant side effects for some of you might be weight loss. Um, but that is not the goal here. The goal is to get healthier because remember your weight is a poor indicator of your health. Your weight does not equal health, okay? Get off the scale. Stop focusing on the scale. Focus on your health. Focus on your bones. Focus on your joints. Focus on your muscles. Focus on your brain. Because I was a slave to the scale like all of us were. I was an almond mom <laughs> for a while. I was an almond doctor. <laughs> God. Until I saw the light. Until I went back to school to learn about nutrition. And I was like, oh my God. What the hell? Um... Thoughts on bioidentical hormone therapy. Bioidentical is a marketing term, not a medical term. You will not hear me say that word come out of my mouth when I talk to my patients. That is a marketing term. That is somebody trying to sell you something. Hormones are hormones. Okay, now I'll say this is synthetic. This is uh, chemically identical to what your ovaries made. I do tend to stick to those formulations in postmenopause, but I am not sitting here touting bioidentical as the greatest thing on earth. That is, there's no study that says that they're safer or more efficacious. That is bullshit, okay? That is somebody trying to sell you some stuff. Um, and trust me, evidence comes out to support it. I will be shouting it from the rooftops. But right now, we do not have the evidence, and I am an evidence. Yes, your teeth change in perimenopause. Any dentist watching me right now, I want to get with a dentist who's treating menopausal women. And I want to talk about what's happening with our teeth. My gums have receded to erosion. I look like an immortal. Like, look how long my teeth are now. So, like, anybody else having dental changes in perimenopause? It's crazy. Um, 
Let's see. Um, let's see. You're taking your fiber product and love it. Do you need a prebiotic? So the fiber product is a prebiotic. A prebiotic is fiber. Remember, the food that feeds our gut microbiome is soluble fiber. And that is what I'm drinking right here, right now. Mm. Um, what are the effects, uh, side effects of compound testosterone? So compounded testosterone can give you unwanted hair growth. It can, um, change your voice. If you become toxic, you can have clitoral enlargement. You can have voice changes. You can have hair loss on your head, but hair growth in other places where you don't want it. So those are the big things. Um, transdermal testosterone doesn't carry any, um, cholesterol or any risk like that oral testosterone does so no one gives oral testosterone that i know of um your doctor is putting you on hormones for sleep uh great great yeah insomnia is one of the core 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 sleep disruption um problems in that we see in perimenopause and menopause um yeah, I want to, in the new book, I want to have a section on, on dental changes in perimenopause, but I'm going to need a dentist to work with me on that one who actually knows what's going on. Um, let's see. Do you sell your own vitamin supplements? So I don't have a multivitamin. I don't recommend those routinely. Um, I have four supplements. So I have fiber, I have collagen, we have turmeric. So if you're having joint pain or hot flashes and you can't take... Um, turmeric is a really powerful anti-inflammatory, uh, compound, and I don't eat a lot of things with turmeric in them. So with curcumin, so we do have that. And then we also have a vitamin D and omega-3 combo. So, um, those are just the four that we have. Um, and those are, I picked those collagen because it's helpful with osteoporosis and most of us could use some help there. And I picked D and, um, Omega together because many of us are deficient in that. Like 80% of my patients are vitamin D deficient right now. Cause I test every single one of them for their vitamin D levels. And I also do fiber because about half of people eating typically a typical diet in the U S diet means a pattern of eating, right? Um, typical diet patterns in the U S are about 50% fiber deficient. And so that's, you know, I always recommend you get your nutrition from food and we only supplement any gaps. You, you don't take supplements to, to negate a nutritional choice that was not in your favor. Okay. Food must come first. Food must come first. Whole nutrition must be the key core of your nutrition plan, not swallowing a handful of supplements. Um, Let's see, um, we are adding K, vitamin K to our D supplement. The, the research has convinced me that we need to add that. So the next batch of, um, it comes out in mid-February, that comes out is gonna have the vitamin K added to it. So I'm super excited about that. But anyway, that's just, that's heading our way. Um, let's see. Started week one of the diet today. Good, good, good. So I get a lot of questions. Can we substitute? What if I'm a vegan, vegetarian? No, we have two weeks of vegetarian options in the book. The online program has seven weeks of meal plans. Um, and um, But the, the, this has four weeks. And then some more vegetarian options and the recipes are all in here in the back. But again, they're just suggestions. So if you want to do batch cooking and meal prepping and just eat the same, you know, eat, repeat the meals a couple of weeks, absolutely. Like these are just suggestions. I don't know what you like or what you're allergic to, or what you have access to, or what you can afford. So yes, 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 a thousand times yes. Um, let's see, what is the name of my book? The, I know it's backwards, The Galveston Diet. The Galveston Diet. It is a wellness nutrition plan for women in midlife to be as healthy as possible possible turkey tail for inflammation i've never even heard of turkey tail you're gonna make me go down the google rabbit hole um have you seen the guy who said we're not supposed to have periods i duetted his video oh my god or no a woman duetted it with the or she 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 hooked it up and did the men shouldn't be given microphone song oh my god i cried i laughed so hard it's so ridiculous like and he says it with such authority like and he's just making shit up like the audacity of people who aren't to comment on how often a woman is supposed to have a period he's saying once every two, four years or something it's so crazy so to me um hang on let me see this one. What agent is 
writing me in. So how do you get the book? You can go, all right, so everybody take a second, take a breath. Double tap my face, just tap my face like this 10 times as hard as you can. We're driving likes, we're making TikTok, we're tricking the algorithm. It gives me likes, it helps uh, TikTok show this video to more people. And then you can share this video with someone. If you don't follow me, I invite you to follow me. Um, Thoughts on metformin. I took metformin because I had polycystic ovarian syndrome and I took it to get pregnant and stay pregnant. Oh my God, it was fucking miserable. But I got pregnant and I stayed pregnant. Um, but the side effects were awful for me. The diarrhea, the gastrointestinal distress, but you know, it worked. There's some really, okay, so am I recommending metformin to everyone? No, but there's some exciting research coming out. What I do hope is that they reformulate metformin so it stops making people sick. And they cut, you know, they figure out what the magical juice is. But there's an animal study that just got released that showed that putting these rats on metformin delayed their menopause. Their ovaries, their menopause is a failure, ovarian failure. Okay, remember that, and it's due to inflammation and fibrosis in the ovaries. And if you taking metformin and these animals seem to delay it, so I'm not saying go take metformin at all, but I'm saying. I'm excited about the research. A, someone's finally fucking researching menopause in a meaningful way and like stopping it or why does this have to happen to us and it doesn't happen to the testicles, just the ovaries, okay? Um, and that, you know, someone gives a shit enough to care to do this research. So I said what I said. Um, all right. PubMed, two kiwi at night for constip constipation. Trust me. I believe you, sister. Uh, berberine instead of metformin, metformer, better in older people read the science about growth hormone. Okay. I've seen a lot about berberine. I need to do a deep dive. I'll do a deep dive for the new book. Um, okay. Eve messed us up. Any recommendations for hair loss? I have an entire YouTube video on hair loss. It's long because I go through everything. So, um, go check out my YouTube channel and find the one on hair loss and hopefully you'll get some good information there and at least give you some talking points to talk to your doctor about. So, um, if you want to buy the book, we have multiple options. We have Audible, we have Kindle or eBooks, and we have um, regular books, the hard copy book, book, book. We have signed copies, and we have the Amazon, cheap, cheap, cheap. Amazon discounts the hell out of it. Like, I don't sell the books. You can't go on my website and buy the book. I send you to booksellers on our website. And you can do Barnes & Noble. We have booksellers. We have independents. Okay, so Brazos Bookstore has the signed copies. They're a little mom and pop independent bookstore. So if you want a signed copy, you want to support local people, they are the sweetest, most lovely people. I went there for hours and signed 1,100 books, okay? And I have to say, my first few signatures were Mary Claire Haver, comma, MD. By the end, it was MC Haver, <laughs> MC Haver. <laughs> So if you, you'll know where I was in the signing process by how legible my signature is. But it's me. I signed every single one of them. So if you care about a signed copy, then you want to support a beautiful local bookseller, get your signed copy. We have a link for that as well on our website. So it's galvesonddiet.com, or you can just go to the link in bio. Thank you for the likes. We're up to 36,000. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, where am I? I live in Galveston, Texas. We are sitting in my office. Hello. Office in my house and um but my clinic where i see menopause patients is outside of houston closer to friendswood if you guys know this area um so yes the galveston diet go buy it keep me on the bestseller list D um so yes uh this is a national bestseller can you fucking believe it uh so we sold thirteen thousand five hundred copies and um, now, you know, as an author, we don't make that much money. <laughs> the, the, the people who, sell, who made the publisher makes all the money, but it's more of a way for me to establish myself as an expert. So, um, yes, pescatarian will work. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very much kind of pescatarian, kind of, kind of. Uh, I'm probably 50% pescatarian, 50% chicken and turkey, and then a little bit of red meat here and there. Um, you have your book. Yay. How are you liking the books? Those of you who have the book, let me see in the comments what you think. Good, bad, ugly. Just let me have it. Tell me, tell me how it is. Do you love it? Is that an aura ring? Yes, girl. Y'all know I love data. So I am such a data nerd. I have my aura ring and I have my Apple watch and I'm constantly tracking. I'm, I like data. And so this has changed my life in how I think about sleep. 
And if, but if you're a type, if, if this is going to trigger some like OCD in you, don't get it. Um, but I wake up every morning and I check my sleep score and it really makes me cognizant of the things that affect my sleep alcohol, caffeine, eating too late at night, when, what time I exercise, like it has changed it. O-U-R-A. I don't sell them. I'm not affiliated with them, but I love checking my sleep score because I am a dork. Um, you ordered the book. So menstrual cup. Yeah, you do you. If you want to do a menstrual cup, just be careful. You can get lost up there. Make sure you are comfortable with putting things in and out of your own vagina. Okay. Um, but if you prefer a menstrual cup and that floats your boat, it's not my, not my jam. I'm not interested in that for me personally, but you know, they're, they're, they're good for the environment and all those things. Um, yeah, knock it out. Uh, is your book good for surgical menopause? Yes. And thank you for saying that I am including an entire section on surgical menopause in the new book. So I'm writing just a menopause guide book. Okay. So like how to talk to your doctor, what the HRT options are, what about joint pain, brain fog, you know, all the symptoms that could possibly be and what you can do about it and how you can be healthier and what the real risks are and how to talk to your doctor and but and um but you know for i'm gonna have a section on premature ovarian dysfunction as well as surgical menopause so happy to do that for you guys and chemo induced menopause so um let's see uh can hormones be a cause of your anxiety we do see increasing anxiety and depression beginning in perimenopause over baseline and there is a great study that showed that women who were on hormone replacement therapy in perimenopause had a lower chance of developing menop menopausal depression yeah so meh. so but then we got to uh let's see um 15 years after surgery, still learning. Yes, the book is on Audible. The book is on Audible. You guys can go get it. It is absolutely on Audible. And I recorded it. So if you can stand listening to my voice for eight or nine hours, then, um, and I talk a lot slower in the book. For the book, they made me talk like this. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, and this is the Galveston Diet. When I was growing up, I mean, it's so crazy. Like, I can't stand listening to my own voice. I don't think anybody can. Um, let's see. I am a fasting purist. I don't put anything in my coffee. Well, I might put cinnamon, a little dash of sea salt in the grinds to cut some of the bitterness. Um, you know, you, I do like um, the Starbucks cinnamon dulce is one of my favorite flavors. It's all natural. And um, that's kind of the black coffee that I drink. I swore, swore I would never drink black coffee. I swore it. I'm not going to do it. No. Until I did. And here we are. Four years later. Black coffee. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Never say never. You can do it. Collagen info, please. Okay, so I fell in love with a product called Sparkle Collagen years ago. And I used to talk to people about it on social media. Like, I take this collagen. And the owner of the company called me one day and was like, hey, um, you're talking about our product all the time. I said, yeah, I love it. And he's like, dude, you're selling a cell. Like, we don't have any. Like, it's gone. And, you know, like one viral TikTok and like all the collagen's gone. So then we decided to partner with him and we basically collaborate. And it's his product, Sparkle Collagen. It says it on the label with my Galveston Diet label and Sparkle like as a combination. And so now he we share a warehouse like like we <laughs> and he's our partner in dis distribution so sparkle the company ships all of our supplements to people and derek who's fantastic and his team um are our like delivery partners so just love him and love his company and love sparkle so yeah that's the collagen i take um uh dermatologists swear collagen doesn't work hey look i've been taking it for years it's a great source of protein for me. So that's part of why I take it. There are some really good randomized controlled studies done independently, not done by Sparkle, that looked at Verisol collagen and the, the decreasing of wrinkles in cellulite by laser, by measuring them with laser. And it was pretty eye-opening to me. And I was like, you know what? It's not going to hurt me. It might help my joints. And now there, the collagen has an indication for osteoporosis. So it may not make like, you look 25. I'm not saying that's what it does. But I know it's helping my bones. And I know that it's giving me a wonderful source of protein for to add to my diet, which I'm always fighting because I'm sarcopenic. Um, 
which means I have low muscle mass with age. Will I do HRT for life? Maybe. Maybe. I'm 54, going strong. Ask me in five years. <laughs> um, let's see. Tried the collagen, your knuckles became calloused and swollen. Stopped after stopping. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, not everybody's going to react. Um, do you recommend electrolytes? If you are having electrolyte depletion, like a lot of people when they drop the amount, when they stop doing the simple carbohydrates and they really drop their carb load, will have some electrolyte disturbances because your body's kind of used to, you know, it takes a while to adjust. And so, you know, for them, I'll say drink pickle juice or, you know, get some electrolytes, some Noom and um, none or N-U-N, none or none, whatever it is. My husband took it. And um, it seems to work pretty well. And so I don't take electrolytes routinely, um, only when I'm like running, when I used to do marathons. So yeah, I do it when I was like sweating out all my electrolytes, but I don't run that far anymore or do any of that mess. So, um, but I don't recommend it routinely. Do I recommend enzymes? No, not routinely. Uh, some say HRT causes cancer. What kind of cancer and for whom? And those people haven't re-educated themselves on the latest data and information in the last 20 years. Okay, the latest information says that hormone replacement therapy, though the increased risk of breast cancer, do y'all okay, do y'all know these numbers? Do you want to know the numbers of how your breast cancer risk is? Do y'all know this? Do you want to know? Okay. For a woman aged 45 to 50, okay? Or 45 to 55. 45 to 55. I hope I have this right. The risk of developing breast cancer in five years is 23 out of 10,000. Your risk of a heart attack is higher, <laughs> okay? Now we're gonna add in hormone replacement therapy. Okay, so your baseline risk, not taking hormones, is 23, okay? Let's add in hormone replacement therapy in estrogen only. So you've had a hysterectomy, you have a marine IUD, you don't need the progesterone. We're gonna do estrogen only. It's 27 out of 10,000. Okay, so we go up four more people. I'm sorry for those four people, okay? So four out of 10,000. Now, let's imagine you are overweight or obese. Do you know what your risk is now? 44 out of 1,000. Or 10,000, 44. It's like much higher, 20 people more. If you drink alcohol every day, if you have a glass of wine at night, every night, Two glasses. Your risk of breast cancer increases to 28 out of 10,000. And nobody talks about that. That alcohol is a carcinogen. We know that, okay? Vilifying hormone replacement therapy, which can dramatically improve your health and the quality of your life. It is your decision whether or not you are willing to take that risk. And if you choose not to take that risk, I will 100% support you. But as long as you know the facts. If you start hormone replacement therapy early in late perimenopause or early menopause, okay, in your menopause journey, and you continue to at least 60, your chance of developing cardiovascular disease is significantly less. Your chance, your all-cause mortality is significantly less. Your risk of osteoporosis is significantly less. You're more likely to die of cardiovascular disease than breast cancer, much more likely. Much, 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 much more likely. Your risk of colon cancer goes down. But there is a timing hypothesis, okay? You have to start early. Um, okay, uh, is 65 tool for HRT. If So if you were my patient and you had no contraindications and no real risk factors and you had been on HRT since early menopause and you were kicking ass at 65, I, we would have a discussion about continuing it. I think if you wanted to continue it, but here's the thing, not many women, we don't have a lot of data to know what happened to these women who were on it for a long time. We don't want to start you at 65 because... If you already have cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, or you already have Alzheimer's or dementia issues, starting estrogen later in life can make it worse. So, um, 
What kind of doctor treats this and how do we find a good one? Well, traditionally you would think it's OBGYN, but most OBGYNs really did not have robust training in menopause or perimenopause care. So it might be kind of difficult. And they're kind of stuck in whatever the research said when they train because they haven't been able to keep up. And the American College of OBGYN has not been great about promoting new articles or new research so that people could change their practice patterns on how they treat menopause. I did all this because I was selfish for myself and my menopause sucked and I wanted to make sure I had all the data before I started HRT and it blew my mind. So, um, just finished one year, no period. Is it early enough? Yes, yes, you're a perfect candidate. Yes, 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 to start hormone replacement therapy. Um, you're 53 and in post, am you too late? No, 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 no. When I say too late, I'm talking 60 plus. 60 plus, or more than 10 years menopausal, okay? It might be too late for you. Um, so how do you find a doctor? So North American Menopause Society has a list on their website. I have a list on my website that were, but from you guys, from y'all, who said, look, I have a great menopausal writer. I'm totally happy. They are the bomb.com. And they went and they filled out a testimonial, which you can read and decide if that resonates with you. And that's the kind of care that you're looking for. It is on my website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom to recommended physicians, okay? Recommended physicians. Um, all right. So I am, hang on. My husband was trying to text me. Give me one second, guys. Uh, call me when you can. Okay. Okay. All right, um, so I'm gonna hang up here in a minute. So awesome talking to all of you. This is The Galveston Diet. This is the new book. It is available, Audible, hardcover. If you are a pencil and underline person, this is the one for you. We still have the online program. Um, if that's, if you prefer digital, you know, the ebook and audible, it's all available for you, whatever way that you want to learn best. We have coaching available. So if you've got the book, you love it, but you want a community, you want, you know, coaching, then we have coaches, you know, we have a wonderful coaching program to really guide you through step-by-step, -step, you know, with extra meal plans, extra recipes, extra support. Um, that's all there. Um, bless you. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. So check out the book, galvestondiet.com and grab your copy. And hopefully there is information in here that will help you live your best and healthiest life ever. And yes, this is if you are 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85. It's for everyone. There is information in here that can hopefully change your life for the best. All right, everybody, take care.